what should we as Greens be talking about to deal with inflation? In contrast to the interest rate manipulation up or down that the Democrats and Republicans are going to talk about. Well, we want to raise supply. I think that means, and this should be part of the, uh, you know, uh, sanctions on, on Russia is to lift the oil sanctions on Iran and Venezuela. And apparently that was under discussion, well, with both countries, with Venezuela last week in Venezuela. We had diplomats down there talking with the Maduro government and in Iran in relation to this Iran nuclear deal. Um, we need to build up domestic supply chains, you know, globalization, neoliberal globalization, I think has hit a wall and particularly because of this war, but it was uh, something that even Biden talked a lot about. Um, we need to, you know, have more domestic production. Even Trump talked about it. Everybody knows that. So uh, how do we do that? Well, the Greens have the Green New Deal. Massive investment in clean energy and an economic bill of rights for things like health care and education and housing. And, you know, we can get our scale up production of heat pumps and wind power and solar panels. We can do that in months if we did it on a scale we did during World War II when the federal government took over a quarter of the manufacturing capacity of the country in order to turn uh, manufacturing, get it focused on producing arms and jeeps and bombers and ships. And within six months, they, they had that stuff pouring out the assembly lines. We could do the same thing right now. Uh, you know, take, for example, uh, electric vehicles. So we're not, you know, burning oil in our, in our transportation system. Um, in the Build Back Better, there were subsidies for the consumer. There was uh, public subsidies to build out the recharging stations. Uh, what was missing and what we need is what you might call climate loans, where you'd have a public financing facility. So, because most people can't afford an electric vehicle. They're, most people are just trying to keep the vehicle they got going. If they do buy a new one, they buy the cheaper internal combustion engine vehicles rather than the electric vehicles. But you can bridge that by, you could call them climate loans. Uh, have the public give people the money up front at very low or just inflation adjusted interest. In other words, the principal changes with the rate of inflation rather than have, you know, just making money off those loans for the federal government. And they can pay, people can pay those loans off because once you have an electric vehicle, it's cheaper to charge it with electricity than it is to buy gas uh, to fill up an internal combustion engine. And so the difference between those costs is what can be used to pay back those uh, electric vehicle loans. So, and we can do the same thing with heat pumps and homes, uh, retrofitting homes and, and businesses and other buildings in other ways. Um, and that's the kind of financing that the public sector should provide because the private sector is going to want to do it, not at cost, like we could do with the public sector, but at cost plus profits. And particularly where there's scarcity, like in housing, they, they'll gouge. Um, so how do we deal with that gouging? With these corporate oligopolies, you know, there's talk about excess profits taxes, um, particularly on oil and gas in, in Congress. Uh, that's okay. Antitrust action, that's okay, but it takes time. But uh, I think we should be pushing for socialization, starting with the oil and gas industry. Um, we need the oil and gas in the transition to clean renewables. And then we need those companies to reinvest their earnings from selling oil and gas into uh, clean power. And uh, the only way that's going to happen is if, you know, we make them a public enterprise and uh, that's what their mission is to do. Uh, but there are other areas, you know, drugs. Drugs maybe should just be the pharmaceutical industry should be a public utility because right now they're gouging us. Uh, ocean shipping, if not, you know, it's, if they're international companies. I don't know if we could take them over and nationalize them, but uh, we could set up a, you know, a public company, even an international public company to compete with them and, again, provide the service at cost rather than cost plus whatever profits they can grab in a non-competitive market. So the other thing is we can <coughs> do social provision of many of the people's necessities rather than have them buy, <coughs> buy that stuff on the market. The obvious example is health insurance, Medicare for all. It's cheaper than private insurance. 
cheaper for us. We pay for it through the tax system rather than our taxes for Medicare and Medicaid plus our private health insurance premiums and co-pays and deductibles if we can even afford private insurance. So that we can lower the cost of health care. <coughs> we can have our public health care system negotiate drug prices if we don't just take over the pharmaceutical industry as a public utility. We can provide public child care. Um, and I'm not talking about having the federal government subsidize private, you know, uh, child care facilities. I'm talking about public child care through the school system. And, you know, we did that during World War II. <laughs> you know, we've done stuff before that uh, people think is, you know, beyond beyond consideration. And housing is going to be a big issue. Um, a lot of the protections during the COVID lockdown have gone away. Uh, evictions are up. Homelessness is up. So obviously rent control. Uh, again, during World War II, we had federal rent control across the board. Um, and then I think something, you know, we talked about, we campaigned for is expand public housing. Expand it until the private sector has to compete with the affordable rents people can get in, in, in public housing. Public housing should be for anybody, not just the poor, although there should be enough slots so that all the unhoused, all the people that need affordable options can get it in public housing. But, you know, middle class people, blue collar workers, everybody should be able to live in those public housing facilities um, if they want to. And a lot of them will want to because the price will be good. The rent will be low. And as we build out this public housing, we can use it as, uh, you know, build it in the most green way possible. So that it's very energy efficient, uses clean power and basically uh as people build that, they'll get the skills they need to in any other new housing that's built or buildings that are built or in retrofitting the existing housing stock. So um, went on a little longer than usual today, but um, I think those are some ideas I've been thinking about and how to deal with this war and its consequences like inflation.